Hey folks, Quill18 here. I just recently did a video for uh, the political machine and that went off really well with no controversy at all in the, uh, the chat. So I figured, hey, let's do more political games. Today I'm going to be playing the amazing Democracy 2 from Posdeck Games, which is a Cliff Harris game, the same person and the same company who put out um, Gratuitous Space Battle, Gratuitous Space Battles, Gratuitous Tank Battles, uh, Kudos, which is also an excellent, excellent game. And this is a, this is a great, fun game where you get to... Um, kind of run a country and uh, it's it's not a very graphical game but it ends up working really really well and I apologize for the screen it's not a uh, boom boom it's not a widescreen game it's only in the 4x3 so it's, we're gonna have this kind of crazy layout um ba -ba 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 -ba. what was I gonna say yeah uh, one thing uh, it is a game where you're basically running a government and as such it centers around the idea that you solve things with government programs so it's going to have that sort of like big government kind of feel to it if you know if you're more of a libertarian conservative type person you're gonna you know this this game's philosophy isn't really gonna work for you but you know what are we gonna have a game where you like play a government and then just dismantle it and leave that's not much of a game so with that being said let us get started new game great 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 fun so there's a variety of uh, scenarios that we can play uh, i'm gonna start with the very first one malanga malanganga well what a beautiful name of a country mm, just rolls off the tongue debt ridden state where voting is compulsory so the only thing we've got going for us really is that all the people will at least vote uh, unfortunately it also means all the people will vote so we kind of have to work really hard to make people happy and we'll see what we can do with that so let me adjust the volumes here and get started so we, uh, you do get the opportunity to do a little bit of setup in the game. What is our party's name? The Popular Front. Yeah, that that'll be us. We'll be the Popular Front, sure. And we're going to be against the uh, the Democrats. The uh, the different parties. It's just a name. None of the things matter. Uh, we can tweak a few different parameters. It is recommended that to start off with, you leave things as is. Uh, they're going to be a little bit different for each scenario. Um, and then you know, if you've uh, if you've played through them all, if you've beaten all the scenarios, then you can come back and fiddle with things and see what that does to the difficulty level. So let us get started. Congratulations on your victory! Welcome, Prime Minister, and congratulations on being elected to the highest office in Malanganga. Malanganga. Ugh, terrible name. In Mala. Uh, I'm sorry to say that the country has a number of urgent problems that you will need to attend to. Regrettably, we have both a large national debt and a government deficit. There is also the small matter of the contagious disease that is bur burdening our hospitals, the vigilante mob is running wild in the streets, and the inefficiency of our industry. As a reminder, you should know that voting is compulsory here in Mala, so we should not be too concerned about the election turnout. No, I'm mostly just worried about, you know, the election turnout. So current situation. We have pollution, street gangs, we are technology backwater, which is really bad, you'll see. There are inner city riots, binge drinking, Vigilante mobs, contagious disease, asthma epidemic, house hospital overcrowding. I have a hair in my mouth. I think Gilbert's been through the room. Homelessness. All right, great. Sounds awesome. Let's start our first turn. I'm sure this is all going to be fine. And what you see here is the game screen. I know at first you're going to be like, well, I don't know what the hell's going on. This is so complicated. It's just a bunch of circles and numbers, and it gets even crazier when you start mousing over things. The fact of the matter is, it's actually incredibly intuitive to play. It's super, super easy to play, and we're gonna we're gonna start looking at that. Uh, we're gonna tackle one of the major problems first. Uh, we're horribly in debt, and debt is mostly a function of how many taxes we pull in, which is highly related simply to the country's GDP, the gross domestic product. Basically, how much money the whole country is making. If the country makes more money, then we're gonna make more in taxes which means we won't be in debt. So let's start by looking at the GDP circle here. Now, the blue circles are your sort of the status of things. So we can look at the GDP. We get a graph over time. It's going to be pretty flat because we just started, obviously, but it will change. It will tell you everything it's influenced by. Um, so the fact that we are technology backwater is bringing down the GDP. The red means it's bringing it down. That the fact that we've got a decent number amount of international trade or we have some international trade anyway is bringing it up so what we want to do is the things that are bringing it up we want to see if we can boost those things and the things that are bringing it down we want to see if we can minimize or eliminate those things furthermore the gdp has effects on other things uh, high gdp increases capitalists also increases co2 emissions air travel and so on and so forth um unemployment 
Well, right now it's bringing it all up because the GDP is low. Uh, I think if this graph were to be higher, then the unemployment would drop, 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 and then until the point where it was bringing down unemployment, for example, that sort of thing. Um, so that screen, there's a lot of stuff going on, but if we just mouse over GDP, you'll see everything will fade out, and then we will graphically see exactly what is happening. You see things coming into the GDP, either uh, green lines, which are good, or red lines, which are bad, and then you see things coming out of the GDP, again, the same way. Um, it's, not, it's not necessarily that green is good and red is bad. It's green brings things up and red brings things down. In case of GDP, we want it to go up. So in this case, green is good. And GDP is very complex. There's a lot of stuff going on. But we're going we're gonna to thin it out. Again, if we click, we can see the biggest thing bringing down our GDP is the fact that we're a technology backwater. So that's our, the first thing we're going to attack. And that's this little bad guy over here. So these sort of red cloudy things, these are a, a special sort of statuses going on. And specifically, these are bad statuses. Um, this, again, because we're starting like immediately, the graph's not very visual here. But these two lines here represent the start trigger and stop trigger for technology backwater. Um, basically, any time the, uh, the value, which is currently way up here, but you can imagine in the graph, it's going up, it's going down, it's going whatever. Well, anytime it goes over the blue line, that's when the technology backwater turns on. And then it stays on until the green line drops below the stop trigger, this yellow line. So right now it's pinned way, way, way high and it's having a horrible drag on our GDP. So we want to eliminate technology backwater. So we're going to have to deal with things that are currently keeping it up. And then we're going to have to improve anything that helps bring it down. So university grants bring it down a little bit. Uh, maybe we can increase the amount of university grants going around, which would help. Literacy brings it down a lot, and we'll, we should double check on literacy. Maybe we can put the liber literacy even higher. Science funding brings it down. Stem cell research currently isn't doing anything, probably because we're not funding stem cell research much. Maybe we can fund that, and that will help bring down the technology backwater. We also have creationism kicking around in our country, um, which is the whole creationist versus uh, evolutionist type of thing. And creationism is bringing up our technology backwater. Um, so let's see if we can deal with that as well. Now, if we mouse over again, we can see where some of these things come from. So let's take a look, for example, at our science funding here. You can see science funding brings down technology backwater. It also directly increases internet access and increases GDP. And then in turn, the internet access increases productivity and productivity. Well, right now it's bringing it down because our productivity is very, very low. Um, but if we brought our productivity up, then it would in turn increase the GDP. So all these things are really tied together in these complex webs. So we're gonna try to find a good source. So again, science funding would help fix that. Uh, stem cell research, if we brought up, should help with the technology backwater. Um, and then if we look at the, uh, the creationism thing, right now we're teaching both evolution and creationism. And if we brought it all the way over to say only evolution, you can see what happens to the chart. Right now, we're contributing to technology backwater. As we go up at a certain point, we will no longer contribute to it. Furthermore, it's going to have other effects. The religious people are going to start hating us, right? That's what this means. This is our, our religious faction. They're going to start disliking us. On the other hand, we're also going to decrease the number of religious people because we're raising our kids with more secular values, so they're not going to become as religious depending on what country you're playing and depending on what kind of strategy you're, you're undertaking to stay, stay in power, for example, and keep people happy, this may be a good thing or a bad thing. Um, it also brings up the happiness of liberals, for example. Whereas if we flip this the other way and brought it way down, you would see the opposite sorts of effect happen. Now, we can't actually go either one of these ways right now because this icon here represents how much political capital we have. This is how much sort of muscle we have to affect policy and change policy. Well, to raise or lower this would cost us 34 political capital. So we can't actually mess with creationism right now, which is too bad because the one advantage to changing the creationist policy is it doesn't cost us any money. Yeah, we don't have enough political control. That's okay. Whereas if you take a look at science funding, well, this actually has a cost, right? If we want to spend more on science, well, that's going to come out of our budget. However, we can afford. Raising it is very easy. doesn't take a lot of political capital. So that's, that's an idea. So those are things that are already there. So the black things here we can, we can influence. These are the policies that we can choose to, um, to we can decide how to fund it. We can even cancel things. We could cancel university grants outright. The red things, again, are, are immediate problems like contagious diseases, which are very, very bad. Um, and it's being 
going up because of poverty, it's going down just a tiny bit because of our state health services. So we could help eliminate contagious diseases if we improve our hospitals, but also if we just bring down poverty. There's a few different approaches that we can do. Um, up here, there's a, a variety of menus we can look at. We've got a variety of threats we can peek at, and you know, right now everything is fine. Lots of reports and ministers and graphs and all kinds of stuff. There's also this button here, which is probably the handiest at this point, the new policy button. And this lets us put new policies into effect. They're divided by a variety of categories and there's a lot of really great stuff. One of the ones that is going to help with our technology backwater is technology grants. It lets us kickstart more sort of high tech kind of industries. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put one of those into effect. It does take two turns before it really kicks in. And it costs nine of our 21 political capital, but that's, that's okay, we're gonna do that. And on this screen, we also get to tweak this, this bar, how much funding we're going to put in. And luckily, uh, right now, this won't cost us any additional capital, I think. I think it shouldn't. I'm gonna max this out, although you can see the cost, like, you know, how, many, how much are we spending? I'm gonna spend a whole $1.5 billion per turn to crank this up. It's gonna bring down our technology backwater a lot. It's gonna bring down our unemployment a little, uh, more internet access, more GDP directly, but also by taking down the tech backwater, it's going to help a lot. It will take six months to implement, um, but that's okay. Um, more capitalists, and again, fewer religious people. So we're gonna X out of here and it should put that in. Yeah, we still have 12 political capital. So now we have um, our technology grants. Where are they? Oh, they're over here. And right now they're not having any effect, but they will. So we still have 12 political capital. Now we also have a lot of problems with binge drinking, riots, and a lot of these, like the, um, the vigilante mobs are being caused a lot by crime. Crime is very high, it's increasing other things and so on and so forth. But a lot of, like what's causing the crime? Well, the street gangs for one, but also poverty. And whoopsie daisy. Let me come out of here. And if we take a look at the street gangs, what's causing them? mostly poverty and unemployment. If we bring down poverty and unemployment, it will get rid of the street gangs, it will help reduce the violence, which in turn will reduce binge drinking and so on and so forth. Like, it's, it's all connected. Um, and air pollution is something we're gonna have to deal with at some point for things like the asthma epidemic, and uh, I guess that's just it. But this is, is really bad. It also makes parents really, really unhappy. Um, this red bar down here, this is how many people are gonna vote for me right now in the next election. Not a whole lot. You can see the people who love me. Socialists love me and state employees love me. Clearly, we are the, we're big government is what we are. Uh, and that's pretty much going to continue, um, probably. So uh, let me, I'm also gonna crank up the science funding. Cause you know, I'm a nerd, what the hell. Yeah, we're gonna have particle accelerators. Again, that tech backwater. And it's got a variety of other things. It increases the number of state employees considerably, um, which, the state employees like me, so actually is gonna help us in our election. You see, I'm creating like, I'm creating this like perfect socialist world. You're gonna, it's, it's awesome. Yes, we want this to trigger. We have 12 political capital. It's gonna use up seven of it. Sounds good to me. Bam. And we only have five political capital left. I think we're going to save that up and leave that as is. We have maternity leave, like decreases productivity. We're like, no, no maternity leave. We can cancel it all together. Um, again, parents, might not be so happy, but our productivity would go up. I don't know if this is a nice thing to do, but it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of funny. Let's skip to the next turn and see what happens. We spend more on cows than the poor. So, economic forecast, good news. The global economy is doing well, having a positive effect on our GDP, awesome. We're currently running a budget deficit of almost 12 billion. Yeah, all right. <clears throat> uh, approval rating is disappointing. If we believe the polls, we should just get 13% of the vote. That's bad. I do have four years, but the four years goes by really fast. Um, and we don't even have that many people in our actual party, which is important as well. Nothing important. Now, there is a special event here, children's food. A law has been proposed to regulate the fat content and nutritional value of food sold to children, including full food sold in fast food restaurants and, of course, food served in schools. This is likely to incur cost for the food retailers. One option, you cannot interfere with the free market. This is the state interfering in people's lives. If kids want to eat fatty junk food and the parents do not mind, then who are politicians to tell people not to eat hamburgers? Okay, that, that's one idea. 
On the other hand, obesity is a major problem which has a severe impact on people's health. Marketing unhealthy food to people at such an early age is unacceptable and we should pass the law now to safeguard the future health of our citizens. You know, you could go either way. We are, again, we're playing that sort of, uh, that, that very big brother nanny state government. That's, that's what we're playing right now. So clearly I'm going to regulate children's food. No questions there. Um, and, you know, hopefully it, it had a, a positive, you know, effect for us. We don't know. Um, so we've got more political capital now. Our tech backwater has actually gone up ever so slightly. But that's because our new policies haven't all kicked in yet. Um, the other thing holding it down is our literacy. What can we do about that? So, literacy is over here. It's helped by state schools, university grants, and internet access. Now, our internet access is going to improve. And actually, our, uh, our literacy, literacy, I guess, has gone up just a little bit, and that's good. Um, we'll see, maybe we can kick it up a little bit more. Should we give some more money to our state schools? Um, state schools here. We could even, we could cancel state schools altogether. Okay, the schools cost us a lot of money. Already there at four billion. If we went up, you know, it does have an effect. It actually, oh, decreases poverty and unemployment. Also, capitalists gives us more state employees. Apparently, you know, we're going that way. But you know, how much do we want to spend? We could go all the way up to over nine billion dollars. Um, that's tough. It doesn't make much sense to do a little move. It's gonna, no matter what, it costs us twenty political capital. So either we leave it where it is, or we make a big move. Can we afford a big move? Can we can we afford not to make a big move? I I don't know. I don't know. I'm just gonna can't. It takes 36 months to be implemented too. Um, that is a long time to be spending a lot of money on something we don't know what it's going to do for a while. It's rough. It's rough. It's rough. Uh, one of the other things we could do to help our economy is we could lower our corporate income tax. Hey, what, what are you doing? You're big government, you're socialist, you're borderline communist is the way I'm playing this. Why would you lower corporate income tax? Well, 